Plants come in all different shapes and sizes, but they all have several structural features in common. Plants belong to the same kingdom. Can you remember what the other four kingdoms are? Animals, fungi, prokaryotes and protoctista. If you would like to learn more about classification, watch this video. In this video, you are going to learn about the structural features of plants. Now, think back to your last meal. You probably ate something that came from a plant. It could have been grains of rice, which are from seeds. You may have eaten a carrot, which is the root. Chewed on celery, which is the stem. Pak choy, which is leaves. Or maybe enjoy some kind of fruit. Let's look at the general plant structure. Plants have a root system which serves to absorb mineral ions, nutrients and water from the soil. It is also there to anchor the plant down and stop it falling over. The shape of this root system can vary. It may be fibrous, as in monocotyledons, or there may be one central taproot, as in dicotyledons. It will also depend on the habitat of the plant and the availability of water. Carrots and ginger, for example, are plant roots that we eat. The next part we will look at is the stem. The stem can vary greatly in size and shape. Think of the difference between a cactus and a tree trunk. This part supports above the ground parts of the plant, and it is through the stem that substances are moved to where they are needed. Sucrose, a sugar, and amino acids are transported in the phloem, and water and minerals move up through the xylem. The xylem has a substance called lignin, which helps keep the stem upright. Stems are mostly found above the ground, but some plants have underground stems. Potatoes and yuccas are actually part of a swollen underground stem. Let's learn about the leaves now. Pause the video and try to think why the leaves are important for a plant. The leaves are where photosynthesis happens. In the chloroplasts of the cells, the plants make their own food, glucose. You can learn more about photosynthesis in this video. The leaves are where the plant exchanges oxygen and carbon dioxide with the air and releases water vapour. Stomata are holes in the leaves that allow these gases to diffuse in and out. This is why you often see clouds forming over forests. Water is released from the leaves in transpiration. The final plant part that we are going to learn about is the flower. Pause the video and try to think why plants make flowers. Now, not all plants do make flowers, but those that do use them for reproduction. Pollen is produced and this fertilizes the ovule. Pollen is transferred from one flower to another by pollinators, such as insects or hummingbirds or the wind. Here, we will look at the structure of an insect-pollinated flower. Insect-pollinated flowers usually have colourful petals. Can you think why? It is so they can attract the insects. Insects visit flowers to drink the nectar, a sugary substance produced in the nectary. The sepals protect the bud when the flower is developing. Flowers have both male and female parts. The ovary develops into the fruit if the plant is pollinated. Inside the ovary are ovules which become seeds. The style connects the ovary to the stigma. The stigma usually has a sticky substance so the pollen a pollinator is carrying gets deposited there. The female parts of the plant together are called the pistil. The male part of the flower is the stamen. Saffron, the most expensive spice in the world, is the stamens of crocus flowers. The anther is where pollen is produced, and the filament holds the anther up. See if you can identify the parts on these slightly different flowers. Check your answers now. 
So in this video, you have learned about the different structures of a plant. You should now be able to label a diagram of a plant an insect-pollinated flower. Mm -hmm.